hey guys and welcome back to my channel so in today's video i'm going to be telling you all about how i got admitted into a medical school here in europe so i'm studying medicine and my final year here in tbilisi georgia georgia the country republic of georgia not georgia in the us okay so um if you're coming in as a direct student even or if you're coming in as a transfer student from another school in another country um, this video is for you I'll be telling you how um, how I went about it what the process looks like tips and what you need and you can get admitted all on your own without the, without the help of an agent that's for real right if you're interested in this video stick around and let's get right into it So let's have a deal. You would click on that subscribe button and hit the like button for me before we proceed, okay? Because I'm saying click the like button because I know that this video is going to add value to you. So please subscribe. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers, okay? We didn't hit that goal in August. Let's make this happen. Let's make this happen. I'm going to be, I'm not just saying subscribe because I know I'm going to be adding value, okay? Um, I have videos that I'm going to be making in the future related to admissions. Um, um, if you're a medical student, even better, um, I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be giving tips that would help you as a student. Coming in and getting the admission is just one part of it. If you know any medical student or if you're currently one or you understand how medicine works, you would know that you would need you need all the help you can you know you need all the advice that you can get and i'm going to be giving all of that in this channel so please subscribe if you have a friend that is in the same situation as you are share this video with them let them subscribe and stay tuned for so many more interesting and informative content content coming your way that's about that so let's get right into this video but before we do that i just want to let you know that um whatever process i'm talking about now is um, directly specific to my own school but i can say that um, the process is going to be very much similar to other schools here in georgia but maybe not europe at large but here in georgia this process is similar but still do your research like i always say find out exactly what they need of course if you're going to attend and um, you're looking to attend any other school you would have to go to their website and find out what they need but the process is basically going to be similar so you would have an idea of what you need to do how much things might cost and the period of time it might take before you get admitted so yeah um even if you're not going to be attending my own school, you're going to be attending some other medical school, you're looking to attend some other medical schools here in Georgia, um, this is also going to benefit you. So let's get right into it. So yeah, um, when um, I decided to attend, um, to apply to my current school now, um, we reached out to them and we sent an email to them and they asked me to get my birth certificate, um, a copy of the data page of my passport, and my YX certificate. So these three things are what you need if you're coming in as a direct student. Maybe I should just deal with the direct students first and then I would put the I will talk about the additional documents you need as a transfer student. So as a direct student what you need is your birth certificate, your um, data page of your international passport and your YX certificate. So um, which is your high school living certificate just in case you're not Nigerian. Um, so for a birth certificate if you're Nigerian, you would have to get, um, what I used was um, national birth certificate, the green one. I don't know if I should get it and show it to you. It's green in color and you get it from, I think, one of these ministries. Um, then the second thing is your international passport. I would advise that you go, if you're planning to apply in September, you should have applied for your international passport at least six or eight months before. You guys are Nigerians, you know why I say this, because it could take longer depending, unless you're in a state where 
um, you're in a city where the process doesn't take that long so find out and try to apply for it on time so that you don't delay and just note that in any of this process time is of essence things could be things could be delayed for some reason from the other people's and from the schools and but try not to make it um, try not to make the, the time wasting from your own end so do everything early okay so now we've talked about the birth certificate we've talked about the international passport the data page is like the first page where you have your name your picture and all of that that is the data page the first page of your international passport and then the third thing is your yx certificate so i think that yx certificate original yx certificate is gotten like either two or three months after the result comes out i'm not very sure but try to track it down so that as soon as you get your result um start checking for when your certificate will be out and go and get it you might not need it exactly at the time of the admission you can be able to use your statement of result because i use my statement of result because my yx certificate had they had they made a mistake in the um they made a mistake in the date of birth so i had to send it back for them to change so but when you're going to need it is during the admission process or when they are going to be taking your documents to the ministry so you can start with your statement of results if your YX certificate original YX certificate is not available or you're going to need it in a month in a month's time so yeah these are the three things you actually need and they would give you when you send it to them they will send you an application letter uh, which they sent to me an application letter and and um, application form to fill so instead of writing application letter you want to apply it's already written there and you just have to fill it in and then the application forms are like information you would have to fill in and send back to them once you send them these things in like two weeks they should reply you and give you um, they should give you um, a feedback on whether you would you have the provisional admission or not then if you get the provisional admission from them and they've accepted you they will give you an acceptance letter and you would have to pay the processing fee admission processing fee that's the second stage of this admission processing fee was i think 150 dollars um i don't know how much it is now i think it's like 200 or 250 dollars currently i'm not sure but you would have to check the um, website like I said they are going to let you know anyways um, once you pay that admission fee I would suggest that you that once you're making that application you're sending in those documents you should already have your money waiting for you so that like I said you're not the one wasting time once you send it in keep your $250 or $150 and once they give you a, fee, a, a reply in two weeks you pay the um, the processing fee the admission fee and once you pay that admission fee the admission fee is for the translation because they don't speak english and so they will translate it to their language and then they would also pay um, for the documents to be notarized and they will send it to the ministry of education so now in the ministry of education that is where the ministry of education will approve your admission and that process takes like minimum of a month minimum of a month so during that process i would advise that you start getting all your documents ready for your visa i'm going to talk about visa processing in a separate video so once the ministry of education approves it and you pay the next thing is to pay your school fees you pay your school fees and that is it you've gotten your admission and the process is very simple and easy as long as there isn't any time lag and all of that so um, that is it if you're coming in as a direct student if you're coming as a transfer student the only additional document you would need is um, your transcript so for me um, they gave me my transcript but um, it wasn't very detailed they just wrote if you're a medical student in Nigeria you understand they would just write anatomy physiology and biochemistry which are the three major courses which are broken down into sub courses or subjects if you get what I mean but um, they asked me to write down all of those 
courses which I had to do by myself. I had to go to the um, I had to go to the dean, and for each course, anatomy, I had to get um, I had to get the sub topics or the sub courses under it, like um, embryology, um, gross anatomy, histology, and I had to write down all the all the courses under each of them and spread it out to give to them. That is to help them know the courses that you've done because our curriculum are kind of different so um for them embryology is a different course on its own anatomy is a different course on its own like that and like that so um i had to do all of that so i had my transcript and i had the other curriculum everything outlined and i printed it out and I attached it to the rest of the documents and together with their credit load and their, and their scores. That was quite hectic for me to do. And as a transfer, if you're coming as a transfer student, you should already get your transfer, um, your transcript, apply for it as soon as possible, like as fast as you can. Transcript was the thing that held me. I lost almost a, a year because of transcript. That is how bad it was. I kept on going there for like every single day for almost a month. These people didn't bat an eye. All they wanted was money, extra money. I'd already paid the 30k that they were going to, that they, were, um, they asked for transcript yet. I couldn't get mine. So start early to, to um, apply for your transcript and try to pursue it as fast as possible. Yeah, so that is all you need to get admitted if give or take um two months everything should be ready or less than two months and once the result for once the result from the ministry comes out it's going to also be part of the documents you would need when you're applying for your visa because they would need to see that document that approval letter from the ministry as part of the documents you would need so that's why i said the earlier you started the admission process and prevent any delay the faster it is for all of this to um, go through and you'll be able to face your visa processing and so yeah that is it for this video if you stuck around thank you so much for sticking around and if this video was valuable to you click on the like button please leave a comment in the comment section if you have any question please drop it i read every single comment i'm telling you i read them so leave your comments and i'm going to go through them so for the three tips for those of you that stuck around this long before you start this journey of application and all of that there are things i just want you to know number one time is of essence i'm sure you must have heard me say it a couple of times in this video try not to do anything that is going to waste your time always be ready number two have an email have an email address that you're going to be corresponding with them back and forth with so that you don't be using different emails that um from different people and they might miss your email when you um, mail them something or when you ask them something okay and try to use an email address that could match your name so that they don't get confused of who they are who they are talking to okay because things can really get mixed up and all of this is also going to be to waste of time so have an email address that that looks formal not something like dangerzone.gmail.com or um um Freaky freaky Jesus at gmail.com. Nobody knows you by that name, okay? So <laughs> I don't know how all of this <laughs> came up, but it's very important. Have one email that you're going to be corresponding with them for. If you never had an email, open an email and let that be you will be using with them. Okay? And then three, look for a place where you're going to be documenting all these things because information are going to be flying up and down. So you don't miss out anything, you have everything arranged. You would have a timeline and be aware of what you need to do next and of course you should be doing your research alongside and writing all of these things down okay and um, so yeah these are the three tips i would advise you to stick to when um, applying for admissions because i believe people look at more than one school so you have everything documented in different sections so that you don't miss things up so yeah if you enjoyed this video um give it a like if you haven't subscribed up until this point, please 
don't live here without subscribing don't live with my subscription because eh okay i'm begging you thank you so much um next video is going to be about visa processing everything you need to know so all of you get in here be ready click on the notification bell so you don't miss the video when you subscribe click on that notification bell that bell there so that you don't miss the videos when they come in share with your friends share with your family okay so that you would not be in any way disadvantaged um throughout this journey i'm here to give you every information that you need and yeah this is the end of the video and I will see you in my next one till then. Keep living. Bye.